Good morning. It is the 24th of February. My name is Greg Simpson, and this is our daily Lenten devotional. This morning, we're going to continue with the reading that we started just yesterday. That's Genesis 16. Yesterday, we read 1 to 6. This is the piece of the story of Hagar in relationship to Abram and Sarai. We're going to continue on with that story, reading 7 to 15. If you didn't catch yesterday's, I'll put the card up here somewhere. It might help you to actually go back and watch that one first. Admittedly, it's a tough watch. We're hitting some pretty difficult and sensitive topics, but without rehashing all of that, I'm going to start right into our scripture. Genesis 16, 7 to 15. The angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, slave girl of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am running away from my mistress, Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will so greatly multiply your offspring that they cannot be counted for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Now you have conceived and shall bear a son. You shall call him Ishmael, for the Lord has given heed to your affliction. He shall be a wild ass of a man and his hand with his hand against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And she, he shall live at odds with all his kin. So she named the Lord who spoke to her, You are El Roy. For she said, Have I really seen God and remained alive after seeing him? Therefore, the well was called Be'er la Hairoi. It lies between Kadesh and Bared. Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram named his son, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore him, Ishmael. Now, much like yesterday, we can't read this story and ignore the harder plot points here. We have a slave girl who has run away from her abusive masters, and this angel is telling her to return. Now, I can't imagine what that would be like. I can't read myself into that part of the story, but there are definitely people around the world who can. And it requires us to see them and hear them, to look to their wisdom and their experience and their knowledge if they're willing to share and let ourselves sit with how difficult this part of the story is. Because I can't speak with any experience about it, I'm going to leave that. It certainly relates to our conversation yesterday about taking back agency of how we read the scripture. But I want specifically to land on this one bit. It's a a little piece of Hebrew that we might not pick up on or notice if we just kind of read through. So she named the Lord who spoke to her, you are El Roy. Now, there's something really spectacular going on here. Almost nowhere else in the Bible do people name God. The way it's written, the way it's described is very unique. We have lots of other names for God, and they generally kind of explain some particular characteristic that that person sees in God or describes the peace of God or the experience of God that they are in the midst of. But Hagar names God El Roy. And that means roughly the God who sees me. That is such a spectacular thing, especially if we let ourselves read this from the position of somebody who has been not seen, not respected, not given agency. This is a slave girl who has been used to provide an heir. Of all the things she has not received, it's recognition. She has not been seen. And so even in the wilderness, as she is trying to escape the abuse and the difficult situation she finds herself in, she realizes that God sees her. And that divine recognition is something truly spectacular. 
I bring that to my own attention and our collective attention because that divine recognition is something we need to step a little deeper into. When I'm reading this, I can shift myself away from it saying, I am not a slave. I have not been a slave. I am not part of a people who have a history that connects with slavery other than maybe as the oppressors and the owners. And I can purposely set aside this story, like somehow it doesn't resolve, it doesn't connect. I don't have this experience that I can draw from. But then when Hagar is so clear and talks about, you are Elroy, the God who sees me, I get invited into this idea of divine recognition. I've been blessed through my entire life, partially because where I was born, the language I was taught to speak, the color of my skin, the wealth and education, all of these things I have benefited from. I have been seen. I am amongst the majority. But I cannot imagine what it's like to be a person who is unseen and yet suddenly know that God sees them. So what do we do, th do with this as Christians? Especially, what do I do with this as a member of the top of the pyramid, a member of the privileged few who get to live their lives being seen? Not because of anything I've done or achieved or earned, just because of where and how and when I was born. I think I need to lean into the invitation from God to see others. If I'm going to claim to be a Christian, claim to be a person who follows God, claim to be a person who encourages and shares and appreciates the unconditional love of God, then I'd best be sharing that with people around me. I'd best be going out of my way to see those who are unseen. They might even look roughly like me. In my particular neighborhood, we're not a very multicultural space, so even the unseen folks look somewhat like me. But there are many people, many voices in this community that are unseen and unheard. If God is going to reach out of time and history and see Hagar in this her deepest, darkest, most difficult moment, then the very least that I can do is recognize and see those who are unseen. I can, in fact, step into or try to make certain that there are other folks who feel seen and heard. That's maybe not easy or obvious, but it doesn't take an awful lot of looking to realize which voices get lifted up all the time and which voices don't. It doesn't take long to look around at the news and the media around me and realize who gets seen, but then who doesn't. So I'm going to commit on behalf of Hagar and the way that she spoke about the God who saw her. I'm going to commit to seeing. I'm going to need God's divine wisdom, God's divine opening of eyes that I might be able to see in that way. But that divine recognition, doesn't every human deserve that? Let's pray. God, we invite your wisdom, your eye-opening and heart-opening and mind-opening carefulness to those of us who can easily spend a life being blind. People who haven't needed to see, haven't needed to work on finding the people who are unseen or hearing the people whose voices are being muted. God, from a place of privilege, I call out to you to peel back the layers for me. Show me both my privilege and the people who suffer, not because of anything they've done or anything they haven't achieved or any will on their own part, simply because of who they are, where they were born, the color of the skin, the way they identify, the clothes they wear, the language they speak, the age they are, 
all sorts of different identity and other markers that we use to minimize and oppress. God, each and every one of these people deserves divine recognition. Make me a channel of you, El Roy, the God who sees. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for being a part of this community, for watching these videos. I really, really love that we get to do this together. And I love that some of these passages that are really, really difficult, we can't just set them aside. We have to dig in. We've got to see what they mean and what they're saying to us. Thank you for going on this journey with me. If you know somebody who could really benefit from watching any one of these videos, I invite you to share it with them. Or maybe you can just click the thumbs up or the like button below that'll let YouTube know that these are the sorts of things that should be shared. If you've missed any previous videos, you can click over there and see them. You can subscribe up there. I love you all so very much. I'll see you tomorrow in the next video. Bye for now.